back up to Mara. Yeah. So I saw the metas coming up so far. We've seen a lot of Scorpios. There's yes. a lot of redundancy and breakers going on. It yeah. makes sense. Kind of cool uh, to see. Yeah. If you get locked out, it's a bad feeling. Uh, one turtle though. That's interesting. Yeah. It's usually, only one turtle. yeah. Usually this run two or three. What did he? What did he skimp on? So he's actually not running medium. It looks like he's running R and D interface, ah, and that actually might be a big deal. Um, I find against moons a lot of times you want to be able to close the game on your terms. Yes. And for this, it's going to go a bit longer if you can't see that deep. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps he has a turning wheel on the list. Um, I'm nope. actually not seeing no it. Turning so wheel. Yeah, it's going to maybe be a while. He doesn't have the ability to close it on his uh, call. Uh, depending on what ice uh, Jason's able to play, we'll see what's happening. Well, I mean, it's your ice right now, but yeah. let's, yep. And we're off. That's oh. a relatively good start. Turtleback's opening. You get some ice on HQ. You want to respect Scythe in turn one. That's a really, really rough opening. Mm -hmm. and There's a career fair. Ooh, Temi, targeting. So we'll see where that goes. R&D is generally the safer butt. Makes sense You to put me. that on a remote. Sometimes you can put a stealth moon there. Something yeah. that can trash Slam and you down lose on all it. of it. Yep. But it looks like we can go in on that R&D. Of course, you do have to watch out for the advanced assembly lines res. Yeah. Drop onto the Temi server. It can always be an issue. Yeah, you might want to actually check that number four. Also, this is like, oh, this is first click. Mm -hmm. So if he has, uh, what's it called, uh, Dirty Laundry, he can get a lot of value with this. He might yes. actually be discarding a lot of his hand at the end of the turn if he just wants to go all in on this. Yeah, uh, actually, he played a career fair as well, so he'd only be losing two cards at the Okay, moment. that's not too bad at all. Mm. Um, and ESC is thinking that's a really solid card in this matchup. Mm -hmm. Let's get value no matter what you're doing, especially if you're running R&D. Very nice. I'm going to see the top card right there. Let's see if we can see on stream. And that looks like a vanilla. Yep. So, if you're not familiar with these Moons decks, uh, basic idea, you want to be drawing a lot of cards, mm -hmm. get a lot of assets down. Once those are down, you can generally fast advance. We have a couple ways to close the game here. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Biotic Labor, that's always good. Yes, indeed. Uh, one of Byroid Work Crew. Uh, yeah, there's that. And uh, I've only seen some decks today that are running MCA Austerity Policy. This doesn't seem to be one of them. No. And that's an interesting card, uh, how to kind of squeeze that in. It is difficult. Sometimes you don't want to be spending clicks losing their clicks. Slots are tight. Slots are tight. And he did discard a Mongoose, which means either he has a Femme in hand or he's not that worried about the early Architect. And that's mm. a card you have to be worried about. For sure. Definitely respect. Uh, I believe it is three to break with a mongoose. That should be right. Yeah. Not the most, uh, not the cheapest, but also not the most expensive. Well, architect can be such a huge tempo hit to get oh, that Estelle sure, moves back. Sure, you yes. can even install an agenda half the yeah. time. And of are. course, that sweet HB ETF giving you the one credit. That's some value. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, excuse me, Sunko is running a rebirth. I don't know if that's a card that you actually want to mulligan into this matchup. There's some interesting decisions I've seen yeah. on top tables for these. For sure. I don't know what you think is the best. I've seen a lot of Leela. Yep. Um, I think there actually might be an argument for, uh, maybe an argument for Silhouette, if, oh, you're, for running, sure. if yeah. you're running that turtle, that's yeah. some good value, you can see what the remotes are. Uh, the three main ones I would consider, Leela, of course. And Single Axe is on top, that looks like it is uh, Lakshmi Smart Lakshmi Fabrics. Lakshmi Fabrics, yeah, that was a good eye. Um, Leela, I'd definitely consider the front runner. Uh, Ian is also very good. Get some yeah. passive credits. Of course, yes. As and as uh, Silhouette is solid. Yeah, Silhouette is Very good synergy with Oma, as well as being able to just incidentally peek at remotes. So this tomorrow comes down early. It's good that it gets you your Temujin money. Mm -hmm. You are paying double. That's a premium to get through the vanilla. I think it's two credits. Two credits as opposed to one, yeah. Which and is yeah, yeah it's, expensive. It's sizable. It's mm. pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but it looks like actually Jason doesn't have that explosive of a match. Uh, like, of a starting. Oh, so that's starting. To, yep. And uh, so Sango is just getting some value away. Yeah, no moon so far. Not heavy drawing. And he's like looking to try actually draw into something on R&D. If you do get the early R&D lock, it's good because you can trash the moons when you see them. For sure. Uh, you can also not trash and get some Aeneas money. There's some good value there. Mm -hmm. How much credits he has? I think he's on 14. Uh, it's a fair bit. Yeah, he's uh, in Jason's hand. We are looking like an architect, it's a, a friend, a biotic, and a wraparound. And a wrap, yeah. And a wraparound, even if you put a four credit tax, a tax on running RD by just putting two cheap barriers, that's really good against the. It's yeah, tomorrow. significant. Free dice we got on chat. Yeah, I think dice <laughs> is allowed at this tournament. <laughs> yes, it is. I'm not sure whether. Uh, uh, it seems like Sung Ho wants to avail of those nice new credits he earned yesterday. Yeah, eh? <laughs> What do you get? The fives? I think. Oh, where there's fives? I think there's fives you get today. I okay. What the yes. Is. Yeah. Cool. And so I think we did see a Femme Fatale in uh, Sunko's hand. Mm -hmm. So we're installing two advanced assembly lines off of friends. That's a lot of value, right? Bang bang. There. He's making three credits off of that. Yep. Oh, now even more. Keep going. There's an additional two. This will put all the. Probably let him put the architect onto R and D, and if mm -hmm. the second one doesn't get trashed, that's an easy daily business show that you can get down and start filtering the draw. Because mm -hmm. you really want to find the pieces in the order that you want them. If your hand clogs up with agendas, we still have Jackson, and that's actually a really important thing. This is the last big premier tournament <laughs> in yes, Netrunner history. It, it definitely is. Where Jackson Howard. Jackson is Howard. Yeah, rest in peace, our beautiful 
uh, executive. Yeah, such a good card. And with mm. Count Siphon, this is just the last big tournament post-rotation or pre-rotation. Mm. Yeah, it seems like the power level is going to take a significant hit. It's it going to be a whole new world after this. And that's always quite exciting to see. And mm. we have an ice there on R&D. I did not get to see whether that was a wrap or the architect. I think the architect makes the most sense. It, yeah, it does. Although, as you mentioned earlier, the four credit tax on R&D runs yeah, is still not too bad. Yeah. I mean, it'll invalidate the Temujin for sure. So with those credits there, I believe Sunko has three, six, seven, eight credits, mm -hmm. um, and he's going to be stopped from getting the next only four off of R and D. He'll come back for that at some point. Yep. You can always install another uh, Temujin if you want. On a and overwrite. Yep. It looks like we're checking the remote. HQ. Yep. No res on uh, Jason's part. And I don't know if Sunko uh, the mulliganed at this point because Desperado is a really good opening. Mm -hmm. His hand is mostly breakers, which isn't the most. Is he running you want. two or three? He's running three. Yeah. Yeah, Desperado is one of the best cards in this matchup. And a single access is going to be a biotic. Sorry for forgetting Slovakia. Uh, I, we apologize. Uh, I hope that they have a good tournament Oh, they there. do. Oh, yeah. beans. My bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, root parasite is about correct. Yeah. So I think we're just going to set up. I think, like, Sungo's board state isn't... If, if there was a rush to go horizontal, I don't know if Sunko could keep up with it. Mm -hmm. You kind of also want that passive draw. Aaron does help. Aaron does help. But yeah. there's not many small agendas in this deck. You're yep. probably only going to get maybe six to eight counters. Early early Aaron definitely is very good, though. Speaking on Rebirth again, mm -hmm. uh, Leela is very disruptive to the Moon's playstyle. Like, um, they can't afford to go really, really ham. And just um, because, incidentally, if uh, an ice that's protecting HQ or ND drops off, then that server will be hit. That's a value siphon. And y yeah, you might not want to be that aggressive early. Once the HQ ice is res, you're going to have to deal for the rest of the game. For sure. Uh, you're going to see Sunko is going to be running first click as much as possible just to respect the Fairchild. Mm -hmm. And it looks like there's a clone suffrage movement there. That's another friend's back. That's an absurd amount of value. Uh-huh. Let's talk a bit about why Moons is so good. Clone uh, suffrage movement. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that'll come back. Yeah, friends in high places. There's a lot of options. The current is really good. You can bring back uh, the yes, nice login protocol. And yeah. there's only there's only three operations probably in the whole deck, mm -hmm. but a lot of copies of them. These decks don't run hedge fund, mind you. It's generally not actually that good in yep. this deck. Yep. And the daily you, business shows on the table to get a filter draw. Mm -hmm. You also see he's running Cyberdex Fire Suite, which is a really sweet tech card. I've seen that do a pretty good amount of work, of work. actually, yeah, against yeah. Amakua. Um, yeah, especially Headstrong Runner might run, and then you res the Cyberdex and uh, go to town. Yeah, it can be very good. Also against the medium, it's always very good. Naturally. Uh, just to talk a bit about the top cut, we have no Shaper up here. Actually, none. Yeah. No Shaper. I think it's six Andes in the top eight. <laughs> a lot of Andy. This is Andy's last hurrah, at least it in is. Canada. It is, yeah. I mean, she's leaving the wig and the dress behind. So, um... Always exciting to see that, but we had no Shaper. We saw a lot of Scorpios, and these are kind of the decks that are generally good against that. Uh, I think Moon was, or these sort of like HB Moon decks were mm. kind of seen to be as the deck to beat. Yeah, uh, yeah. We still have a lot of them going in the cut. Mm -hmm. I think we have six players left, and there's a Jackson. We're also seeing a lot of Scorpios in the cut. Yeah, a lot of Scorpios. Oh, wow. Um, Jackson on the table, that's going to help draw up. You really want to find that Moon. You want to start to get that explosive burst where you can start to threaten to score. Uh, the credits are actually pretty good. You actually, like, you could consider bioticking out, but this is a deck that doesn't have the ABT. There's only one agenda you can biotic out. Mm -hmm. And the Friends is coming back. You're going to have to deal with a successful field test sooner than later. That's a free Friends in High Places. And I believe we're actually off camera. That might be an issue. So there's another card outside of that server, and we should know what those are, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. We're having somebody look into that right now. Oh, oh there's advanced cool. assembly lines. So assembly lines coming down. That's another, cool. what, four credits? Uh huh. And, and there you go. After, yeah. And another. And another. And we're icing something up. Yep. The server's getting iced. So if I'm not mistaken, that's probably the wraparound. Yeah. Uh, that's protecting the attacks. Protecting moons? The oh, yeah, yeah. I think that is a moons. That's likely a moons at this point. And uh, Sungu's going to need some sort of pressure. He's going to need uh, he's going to need some card draw. Uh, generally, Earthrise Hotel is the way that he's going to be doing it. Yes. And he needs to get that clickless card draw down because you need to be able to interact with the board generally two, three clicks every turn, mm -hmm. and you don't have the time to be drawing up. That's why we don't see uh, Mr. Lee or Blockade Runner in any yeah, of these Yeah, those spells. cards are very hard to weave into a turn. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lee's all right, but yeah. Blockade Runner, half your turn drawing is it's, it's very sizable Significant. when you have to deal with cards like Friends and High Places. For sure. So single off the drop, we got the Rebirth. Oh, nice. What's he turning into? Uh, we'll see if he plays it. It's probably all right to be, I think, yeah, Leela probably makes the most sense. I think so. Um, yeah, there definitely is an argument for Silhouette, especially if you have the Omaku on the table already. Uh, and there definitely is an argument for your Ian, but I don't think it will be relevant enough. They'll probably only make like six credits off of Ian if he turns yeah. into it. Mm. So Daily Cast on the biz on the table, that is uh, some draw. And, and that Clone Suffrage movement was contested. Mm -hmm. That's out. 
but the Daily Business Show is still firing. That's such good draw. That's great. Uh, great stats on DBS, always and forever, until it rotates out of Yeah, course. it's actually a really strong card post-rotation. Being able to filter your HQ, filter your draw is incredibly valuable in a post-Jackson mm -hmm. world. And still no agendas in sight. Yeah. I think that we buried, I think, if I'm not mistaken, they buried a successful field test. Yes, I think that's what happened. Jade Inc. put that on the bottom. So mm -hmm. that's not an agenda you're going to see anytime soon until they shuffle the deck. That's mm -hmm. Jackson Howard who's going to be doing this that. He's got a nice, fine hand here. Uh, seems, oh, there's, there's a an assembly line. Uh, that actually might be a test to see if he can run it. Uh, that could be a Moons in there, and now we can go. We have the full turn to get the value to get yeah. the card draw. And there you there go. There it is. There's a Stell. Such a Temple card. You basically can't go wrong with that. One card gives you parity. Really, no, yeah. Really? And uh, being able to activate it at uh, trough speed is great. It's absolutely absurd. And yeah. these decks aren't running Rumor Mill. Actually, none of these decks are either running any sort of... I don't think... I think they may be running one political operative we have in uh, Sunko's list, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, yeah looks like it. One. So that's a cool card. Um, it technically threatens a Stell Moon at every paid ability window. Yes. Uh, it also threatens things like... Um, it's very strong against uh, Lakshmi Smart Fabrics. Mm -hmm. You can't really rely on that. You have to trash it proactively, and that can be quite, actually, quite uh, impinging. Yep. Having a political operator on the table will definitely restrict your lines. Last click, draw with Jackson, get some more cards. We have a food in hand. So a lot of times when you want to beat these sort of decks, oh, there we go. That's uh, that's awesome. New um, remotes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Back on screen. Yep. So a lot of times the way that you can beat these sort of decks is HQ uh, pressure. There we go. Consolidation. Okay, uh, yes, indeed. Heavy HQ pressure is really good, and criminals are generally good at that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're probably looking at legworks in this list. We have one legwork, no recursion whatsoever, no same old thing. So that legwork really has to go pretty far. Uh, Legwork or any HQ access is likely to be fruitful with a DBS on the table, of course. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But yes, uh, hammering HQ is generally the way. Just uh, stripping out those first couple of agendas will slow the game down a lot. And that's, I think, the threat. There you go. There's oh, the there Rebirth of Leela. And he knows now if he uh, if Jason fast advance out an agenda, he's going to be losing that HQ ice. You're open to legwork at that point. You're open to a lot of uh, pressure, account siphon. Maybe it wouldn't be that bad. You're sitting on a healthy 24 credits, which is a lot of credits mm -hmm. uh, for this early in the game. And checking the singles. Just making sure. It's a check. work crew, I believe. Yes, it's a work crew and a virus suite. And a virus suite, which he's not trashing. He doesn't really care about it at this point. And that's a paperclip on the table, which I don't even know if you need to install. You probably want to throw it out. Mm. I'm not sure. In Toronto, did you guys ever put Arc Lockdown in your Moons decks? Was that a thing that caught out? A little bit. Yeah, yes. just to, just to just, to, just to make sure the runners are honest. Uh, a lot of people get you know too big for their britches and start yeah. discarding conspiracy breakers. Can be an issue. It's also really good against the the clot, but that's not something ah, you'll yes, be worrying about. Yeah, yeah not, not at this point. Yes. So keep drawing up with the Jackson. He's looking for something here. I think this is like the perfect time that you would want to even perhaps double Biotica out um, a successful field test. Oh, yeah, that really could be really good. Board. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, he has a single backs out only, so it's not the maximum value this deck can generate, but it is still a hefty chunk of change, and he's already sitting pretty. Friends on the table is coming back. Two cards are coming back, and you just have so much value. Those, <laughs> yeah, I think it. those like two single, um, what are they called, the uh, advanced assembly lines have been firing yeah, so many they, times. They fire, game. yeah. The assembly lines are very advanced. Kind of getting out of hand. Mm. So Sango really needs to get his, his tires spinning. Okay. Yeah, he's uh, putting out the Suffrage and the Smart Fabrics, basically forcing Sango to deal with both of those. You have to deal with that yeah. CSM, yeah. Uh, the Clone Suffrage movement. Oh, that man, that, yeah, that card is gross. <laughs> Especially in conjunction with friends. Yeah, we have yeah. friends. That's it's the best friend of that card. So two credits comes off of the daily casts. Mm -hmm. uh, still not that much pressure on the table. I think you want to be seeing the Desperado. Yeah, I feel like Sunko is getting a little bit antsy here because his setup was not the best. And that's a tech startup. Mm -hmm. uh, that actually could mean some pretty bad things. Oh, for sure. Um, I think it goes. Yep. I think that has to go for one credit. And that's the problem when you don't have Desperado, when you just have Aeneas. Now, every card that you deal with, that's a credit swing as opposed mm -hmm. to gaining credit. Yes, indeed. And that CSM goes to... All right, so he's dealt with both. Uh, Jason spent a click and two credits in order to tax Sung Ho pretty significantly. Yeah. <laughs> like, almost pretty much half his turn. And there you go, that's a Caldera and a bin. I've seen that card do a lot of work here in the top cut. I think we're uh, done with our Genteki matchups. Yeah, the, the, uh, the IGs are now the IGs have been weeded out by yeah. that, but man, what a card. Um, and I still know no passive card draw. The Aaron will come in relatively soon. I think mm. Jason is prepping to score. Yeah, for sure. That Moons is at five. Uh, that's, you can yeah, basically yeah. assume you draw anything, yeah, right? Exactly. Jason's draw has far eclipsed Sungho's. 
So getting a Vitruvius token, is that that's worth pursuing? I think, I think so, yeah, for sure. Uh, Vitruvius token is so flexible, especially considering like how redundant this deck is. Just yes. being able to find the one piece you need back again from your archives. Very good. And there's a five card draw yeah. at the top. I believe actually Jason might be doing that on his own turn, just so he can get, or on uh, Sango's turn, so turn. he can get the daily business show trigger. Yes. And being get able the to maximum choice there. Indeed, put one down. And it looks like he got a food on the top. I don't think he wants to keep that. Mm -hmm. I think he might be burning a food there, but he draw another Estelle, so the train's gonna keep rolling. Mm -hmm. And now beginning a turn daily business show. Yeah, burying the food is a great choice, of course. The food is ideally what you want to end the game out on, as usual. And still He's there deciding with 36 to, credits. That's yeah. a lot of credits. That's a lot of money. He can, uh, depending on whether he has a material on board, he can really do whatever he wants at the moment. So the ice in it, what I've been finding really exciting when playing this game is that a lot of people are very strict with the, the ice suite that they have in their moon stacks. Mm -hmm. Generally, you can expect some very simple end around barriers. You have to respect the Fairchild 3.0. Fairchild 3.0, yep, for sure. And then you got the Architects. Yep. Which makes this a very interesting game, and you saw how Sanka threw out his mongoose, the idea that I know what I need. You yep. generally want to put that Femme on a Fairchild. Makes sense. Uh, you want to get that Fairchild, or sorry, you want to get your Femme out before you start hitting the Architects. Uh-huh. And it's cool that there's some known information there. Them uh, breaks architect for four, which is not amazing. A hefty chunk, but I mean, if you need to get in, you can get in. Uh, usually, this runner is a lot richer, of course. Yes, generally a lot more money coming out there. And we're gonna be resing a Lakshmi before resing everything else. So he has two tokens on it. Lakshmi gets a credit or gets a token on its own res, which is pretty surprising. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty surprising. Very strong card, and we're gonna be bioticing out there. Indeed. Get a free install, so I think we can score a four-two with relatively no issues. Okay, so we're crew. There's a Lakshmi smart fabric. Indeed. Hey. So Work Crew lets you install a card after you play an operation, so Biotic gives you four clicks to advance a card four times that you've just installed. Yep. Still getting credits on this, too. Res cost on Work Crew is two? Three? Uh, to res, I think it's two. Okay, not bad. I think it's a two to four. Mm -hmm. So now that's on the table, you get two credits. You can advance that out four times. I don't think these decks run. Is he running team sponsorship? I think that gets the cut. Oh, wow. That, it looked that card like, yeah. comes in and out of these decks a lot. Yep. So he's not going to be able to recur something, but he's going to be able to score that. And he did just draw all the cards with Estelle Moon, so, all right, so you can here be they able come. to get yep. so much value. These are all free installs. Yes, mistaken. indeed. And that's why you're running the field test. Absolutely absurd. And yep, you, you can, can install so much of this. Really leverage that Estelle. So that's a server. You don't actually see a lot of times Moon's going for the go, big yeah, server. Yeah, popping out a server, but, but there it is. But it seems like the right play here. I think it definitely is. Sorry? Two. Ah, oh, yes. It's two to... Uh, oh. There's for a work crew. Uh, it's uh, two to res and three to trash. So figuring out what to do here, there's actually a lot of choices with oh, this fires so where you want to put everything. Yep. Yeah, okay. So we're swapping that over there instead. For sure. Build your own board, and this is probably a very good window to score the next successful field test, which he's just put into the remote. And there's yep, two new remotes generated. Nope, no, he's uh, street magicking here. <laughs> Okay. I think there's some naked agendas on the table. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah. one of those is a successful field test. Yes, but empty. as Sung Ho checking is definitely I think not he has to. Oh, well, I suppose if he keeps an agenda in hand, he can protect it with the with Lakshmi. Lakshmi Smart but I don't exactly. know if he has another one. Yeah. No, he's not. He's not. He's just holding the single card now. So more credits coming in from the Turtlebacks. And mm -hmm. I would say Sung Ho's in a bad spot at this point. And this is, mind you, this is a loser semifinals. Whoever loses this game is going to be out of the tournament for a while. All right, bouncing that with Elo. Oh yeah, trigger order. And he got some air and draw, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Good on Sango for not forgetting yeah. to uh, trigger his Lila after that entire brouhaha. And Sango has his work cut out for him. Yeah, he um, with Lila on the table, actually installing naked agendas is kind of a risk. Like, it is. He can snowball in the opposite direction. For sure. If he finds a successful field test, he'll be able to bounce that agenda in the server. Mm -hmm. uh, then. At that point, I guess you could even consider going HQ. Yeah. You can't really tax out on uh, resing ice, like with 30 credits. That's an yeah. absurd amount. You would definitely consider going to HQ, but you do have to respect the fair child, as you he's, mentioned he's earlier. He's checking. Oh. That's a moons, I believe. No. If I'm not mistaken, with does he keeps checking these stuff. I think he has two. to, and I think he that's the agenda. A peak. And that, that is was agenda. a bit ambitious. A nice sniff. A huge bounce. Nice sniff. Bouncing so the, oh, HQ going ice. Straight for All siphon. right, here it comes. Here it comes. He's letting the uh, the installed in the three ice remote go. Yep. So that's the value siphon. Okay. You don't have to clear any tags. That's just the ten credits that he needs to well, keep going. Well, there's that money, and uh, you'll get two cards out of the equation as well. It's very strong, and yeah. now actually the credits are beginning to stabilize. There's still the agenda yeah. in the remote. Mm -hmm. I believe it might actually be a food, mm. which he's not gonna be able to score next not turn. Not right now, but uh, will with a biotic. With a biotic, yeah, I think he might be. Well, it depends on what he installed. I, I yeah. actually missed a few cards. 
And we have the Inversificator in hand. That card gets some value. Uh, it's expensive to get going. You have to install that for six, and I think you break a Fairchild for, if I'm not mistaken, another five, uh, It's uh, three to match, I believe, and then three to break, yeah. so six. So it's yeah. going to be about 12 credits before he starts moving So hefty, around. yeah. But once that's done, you can swap it with a vanilla. And, and then uh, maybe, you have yeah. a good HQ run. Yeah, smash that server with impunity. Well, two credits still, but yeah. yeah. So Lakshmi's still going, and if I'm not mistaken, Sunku is running a film critic, so he might actually want to leave that on the table to surprise with a film critic. Mm. Uh, if uh, Jason gets a bit um, very sure of himself and stalls yeah. naked agenda, and starts advancing, yes. you can yes. actually throw that film You can critic really down. get him. That's very true. Film critic actually did a lot of work in this tournament so far, and I think <laughs> a big part of that's all the the Scorpios we've seen today. Yes, uh, it's very good against Scorpios. It's very good against uh, IG and um, the other Jinteki identity whose name escapes me. <laughs> Uh, just being able to not have to pay for Obokata is a huge deal. Yes. That's five cards, four cards, five cards in some judgment. Oh, terms. indeed. And, uh, issue. and of course, you always don't feel like playing a, the side game for FP. Future perfect. So it hands the login protocol on the table, and mm -hmm. while tackling on the clicks isn't that necessary, that's mostly there because of the Fairchild. Indeed. You can't click through it now, so if there is something like a barrier into a Fairchild on the HQ, you're not going to be able to get accesses, and that's a really big deal, because Leela can snowball with his accesses. Mm -hmm. Hitting a Fairchild even once is usually enough to spell the game. Yes, it can be disastrous. And an Architect now also would be pretty rough. It would Moons be comes back, might pretty, go into the Pretty dang rough, for sure. So uh, we'll see. That's a lot of breakers in his hand, and not a lot of ways to generate economy. Mm -hmm. This deck makes a lot of remotes in chat. It is it is a very horizontal deck. <laughs> An understatement for sure. Uh, friends will do that. All right, so it looks like nine. Is he contemplating? Ooh, ooh. He might be counting out the fem here. Yep. I'm not sure exactly what he needs to fem. What do you fem at this point? Femming blindly at this, it could really backfire. You it see could. at least one vanilla, so you know he might get some value. But yes, yes. You might also, I don't know, these amount of credits, you might actually want to get the Fairchild to fire and then fem it just so that they waste the six credits, mm -hmm. but money doesn't seem to be that an issue. And there's the fem. There's the fem, there's fem nine Patel. for the fem. Get some market piece of ice. Yep. What ice will he choose to mark? He's choosing the middle? Nope. So oh, there it is. there's three ice there on the remote. The middle is the one. It's not like he's running inside job or spear fishing, so he's going to be honest about their Inversificator as well. He's running last click. Thanks for that money. Dad, he has enough money to probably yeah. get into that server. Yeah. I think he can do that. And some Cogate reses here can be swapped with the vanilla. You can also swap a Cogate down the line if he's running something like a quandary. Oh. But oh, yeah, for sure. I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case for this deck. Uh, no. Yeah. And there you go. That's a bit of a miss there. He uh, did miss that one a bit. And that's going to be six credits, so it's just probably going to be stopping this run. Because that'll put him on one credit left, if I'm not mistaken. And you can't really do much with one credit. Three, four, five, six. Oh, for five? Oh, it's five. It's strength. Yeah. No, it's strength five. There's six. Yeah, there's three. Let's trash the program, I guess. Or a trash and installed card. Sure. He might actually be fine with trashing to tomorrow if he brings a paper clip back, but that could be a sizable credit. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair credit boost. But uh, I think ultimately the savings on paper clip yeah. would be worth it. Over time. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see. You can also, in theory, let this fire. It's about the same cost. No, it's really not a good reason to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, currently on commentary is Andre and Mikhail. Hey, how's it going? Mm -hmm. um, so he's really thinking this one out. Um, I, he got a break, and I think he just got tempo, hit the tempo loss, and just kind of walk out from this. Mm -hmm. Just walk away. It's yeah, he's he's, he's uh, at the server. And when that sort of tempo hit, that's also another ice that you can't bounce. Huh? And I don't think we actually have run events here. Like, if he wants to get into that server, he's actually going to have to spend two clicks so that current is on the table. Yep. We are probably running three copies of Employee Strike. Actually, only two copies of this. Only two for Employee Strike, yeah. Is there any other currents in this? Uh, I think that's it, no. No, wow. Yeah, he's going to have a tough time of it. So that server is actually going to be pretty challenging. He's never going to be able to click through that thing. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, protecting a GF5. Uh, pretty sure it's a GF5. And it looks like he actually trashed his Aaron and his Aeneas just to get wow. going with this. He's pretty confident he's that's the agenda in that yeah. server. All right. And Let's see what's up. That might Three actually just credits. be a uh, wrap. It's a wrap. All Save right. himself one credit with one a credit, fam, I yeah, guess. Sure, value. Sure. Value. But yeah. if the next card is an Architect, which, uh, mind you, Jason is running low on credits, but he can totally res that, and it's going to put him exactly to all two credits short of breaking an Architect. Yes, indeed. He's going to keep going. There and it is. The architect. That's yes. the biggest punish last click Architect. Yes. You can now take an agenda from the top of your deck, install it naked into a remote server. That is such a huge issue. All right. Five. Five off the top, and yeah, we see there's, there's a Vitruvius. Yeah. Oh, 
and, and that's Jackson. probably what it's going to be on the table. Yes, makes sense. It's going to get a bounce. Yep. It's also really unfortunate for Sunco now that all the ice on the remote server has, has been, been rezzed. And that's, you know, the install costs on those ice can be pretty, pretty sizable. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a tempo swing. He just got a bit unlucky on that ice. Yeah. For sure. That, that Femme call was a hard call to make. Unfortunately, that was the least advantageous of the ice on the server to uh, Femme token. So I don't know if Jdang, like, I think what Sunko went is, in theory, I, you get the most value if you do um, if you do Femme Fatale, the second piece of ice, if you were playing around inside job. Perhaps. Yes, yes. And it looks like Jdang did not play around the inside job. A lot of these Andy lists are kind of, they're way too tight. To they're way, way, way too tight to, yeah, to run the inside. But maybe he actually had that information and played against it. Mm-hmm. I didn't see what he installed there. I think we missed that. But, um, oh, no, we're going back. So you do have to say what number of the card you installed. You don't actually get that much value on it, uh, specifically in this situation, but if you're running R&D, mm -hmm. it is, and I believe that's the Vitruvius naked on the table. You get two credits there. Yep, two credits here, very nice. And something's gonna be Everything coming back from back. HQ or Archives. Very nice. Imagine it might be actually just be that Estelle. Yeah, or, or the clone, CSM. Clone move. Clone yeah. Very good. That's another biotic. That's uh, it's very, very it, close it to your win. It forces Sungho to deal with it immediately. And of course, with uh, enhanced login protocol on the table, that's a tall order. Well, actually, mind you, um, if he doesn't, there's an agenda in that remote, right? Yes. It's a global food initiative, yeah. Well, if he doesn't fix that, which he has to do now by yeah, reinstalling over yeah. it, which he has Jackson, it's basically like an end the run. Yep. Uh, that would have been a double bounce, and that would have been an issue. Mm -hmm. Reading so, Architects. Yeah, you gotta get that one to read a while. Yeah. There you go, that is Can't Be Trash 2. That nope. is the Byroid Work Crew, so yes, we're gonna indeed. get some more value there. Yep. It's another thing to res too. I think actually he's missing his Lakshmi counters. He should have three more on there. Oh, yes, he's res several. Yeah, the ice counts there yes, too. It's not yes, just yes, assets. Yes, yes. I don't know how impactful that's gonna be, and I think we're gonna see a score this turn. Triple advance on the Vitruvius. There it is. Gonna get a bounce. No more Aaron counters to hand out. Yeah. But we can bounce something here. Neither um, Aaron counters nor Aeneas informant, yeah, sadly. Very unfortunate, but R&D yeah. is now open for two credits. All right. And that's going to get and him back into Temu, yeah. Temu. That's technically value. But these are the sort of games where you know that you're in such a bad spot in terms of tempo where you just need to slam medium yes, go. And he, yes. Sungo does not have the option. Unfortunately, yep. So we're going, get a single there. And he knows what that is. Like, we saw that with Architect. So that's almost definitely not an agenda. So this is more of a credit play. Yep. Having a gander, seeing what's up on top of R&D. It's a vanilla. That is a straight miss. He's running Archives. This will get the shuffle with Jackson. So yep. you can now run R&D, see For a new a fresh card. card. Sure. I don't know where the singles are going to be your way out, but you just need, generally, he's not running anything to give him more agenda points. So he's going to yep. need three more agendas. Yep. That can be quite hard. If he gets this pull, it can make him uh, back into this game, but otherwise it's looking dire. He's just uh, kind of idly fishing here. So I don't think we have an Estelle on the table. So card draw is kind of limited. Also, this is very important. This is the first time R&D has been shuffled. Mm -hmm. So I think there actually might be two agendas on the bottom of the deck yep, yep. that are now in play, basically, mm -hmm. and that does a lot for the quality of the R&D accesses. Yeah, he's also uh, tossed in the GFI that he trashed earlier from right. that big-ass remote. So yeah, in one way, it might be easier for Jason Dang to find his winning agendas, but in the other way, uh, Sunko has a better chance of finding some through mm -hmm. Again, it's a single peel. Let's see what happens. <laughs> There's such a swing on these singles when it comes to, uh, to Leela. Yeah. The tempo can just keep flying in your direction, and we're going to see a single there off the top. Oh no, he's not running back. Oh, okay, guess well, what? We got the blue moose, so sure, we need some moose. money. Yeah, we need some money here. So let's see what the D DBS is, because it actually can be a big deal. Jason is at a very manageable 10 credits, of course. Uh, not exactly Oh, it was an agenda on top. Oh, no. Oops. <laughs> Oops, yeah. I mean, he oh, couldn't man. have known. Yeah, no way to have known, and he wants the value there. Mm -hmm. uh, Travis, we're on the screen. So I'm not sure what he took there, uh, but he has a biotic in hand, so he's pretty ready to score. He has a biotic, and he also has the, a moon, yeah. the, cl the work crew, so he can basically score just about anything from uh, hand. Uh, ideally, a GFI. I think you can score a GFI, right? Yeah. Uh, well, no, he needed Jeeves on the board. Yeah, as well. right. You need another Jeeves. And how many Jeeves are in these decks? I think two. Two, two. seems about yeah, right. Two seems right. So Stella's going to be going. Uh, we're going to be flooding the board with more cards. Mm -hmm. Just to get the card draw, it really doesn't matter when you install. There's a turtle back. So yeah, yeah, just need to filter for us. There's and another friends up friends. top. That'll give you uh, two more card draw, mm -hmm. a bunch of credits. And I don't even know if you need more ice, but it looks like he's going to be respecting Yeah, he'll that rather ID. shore up than score out at the moment. Friends taking back. Uh, probably... Uh -huh. Cone Suffrage maybe yeah, you have to is. deal with. Yep, yep, yep. 
That's a free friends, and the recursion doesn't stop here on HP, does Two it? clicks, two credits is a significant tax when Sung Ho is as low on resources as he is. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, Blue Moose, an insane card. Uh, yep. Kind of a crazy card. Uh, it's going to be giving him two credits a turn. These sort of decks generally don't care what they're uh, removing from the game. Huh? They don't actually recur much. You just don't want to get rid of your paperclip. That's the only rule. Yeah. And that's kind of, that's like a big deal. The that's fact that you can get clickless economy against a deck that was that's so pretty much strong it. in your clicks. Yeah, um, we've lost the same old thing out of most of these Andy builds at this yeah. moment. Yeah. Is that a response to uh, Scorpios? I don't know. But sometimes if you can just go fast, it's mm. just as good as recurring. It is the end of this meta, so you might as well cram in all the value cards you can. <laughs> so let Moonsoon give three cards. Uh, it's basically four cards with the DBS, uh -huh. so he's very likely to be able to find his agenda for the win. Uh -huh. um, you might want to pop that Estelle Moon. If you run it, they're forced to draw, and then you can, in theory, run HQ, but with two pieces of ice and the current online. Right. And that's actually a big deal if he took the card off the top of R&D. Giant deal, yeah. Because the current is still online, yes. and that makes that remote server very difficult to get through. Sung Ho in the tank here. We're trying to figure out what to do with the very limited resources that we have on hand. A lot of this is going to come down to the food. I think J Dang just wants to score the food. That he makes a lot of sense. Have yeah. to go the double. No, uh, yeah, two it, exactly. He's uh, it's at the point where uh, 14 credits is not exactly the most comfortable, mm -hmm. um, especially considering how credit intensive it is to score out. Uh, even just fast advancing a 3-2 from hand is six credits, including the ETF. Um, so, yeah, he wants to score the food, almost certainly. Also, Tech Startup is a very must-trash card at this point because it does represent Jeeves. Oh, right, yeah. And Sunko knows that there's a work crew on the table. Uh -huh. So once you have a food, once he has a biotic in hand, which he already does, that's, then, uh, that's GG. Yep. So you need to figure out what those face-downs are, and you might actually need to have to deal with these. Mm -hmm. Employee Strike on the table, that's good. That'll turn off a current. Uh, it's kind of clumsy because you can't play on the turn you run because you basically break even. Alas. But we'll see, and then DBS actually might be considered trashing. You might need to consider trashing the Daily Business Show, but with Clone Severage movement and the recursion, I don't know if that's going to do it. Alright, so just digging. That's on Sango's turn. One, Get the DBS. two, three, four. Did he find it? He no. He found a Jeeves and a Biotic, Antibiotic, which are both yeah. just as good. Very Jeeves good. is technically cheaper. Yep. But he's still just finding that global food. Mm-hmm. I think a Jackson at this point also would be really good for Jason. He needs to find those agendas to score. Mm -hmm. He was going to take the biotic? No, he's going to take the LP instead. Oh, no, binning the LP. Sure. But putting it so in the bottom of the deck. Uh, oh, shit. We still have some mandatory draw, too. Yes, indeed. That was DBS. Yeah. So this yeah. is DBS on his turn, the first time he drew this turn. Blacklist, yeah. and there's the food. That's game. Yeah, it is. That's that it. Is very likely game. All right. There's a little spring in his step now as he decides uh, if he can do this. So there's that. So he can install the Jeeves if he drew it. Yeah, there. That'll give him some credits. That's there's the Jeeves. Jeeves. And now a double biotic, or even a single biotic, and that uh, Byro recruit, that's game. Yeah, he's decided to extend the hand here. He knows that Jeeves is there. Uh, Jason just shows him the win from hand, of course. And there we go. Jaden is going to make it on to, I believe,